A contemporary music critic has suggested that the four greatest musicians who ever lived in alphabetical order are Bach, Beethoven, the Grateful Dead, and Mozart in that order. And we're delighted to have with us, however accurate that music <laughs> critic may be, we're delighted to have with us Jerry Garcia, the founder and, and uh, lead guitar and vocalist of the Grateful Dead, uh, who's spoken of as, as one of the most uh, prolific uh, musicians uh, today. And Jerry explains that that's because he's crazed, he's obsessed. We'll find out in a minute when we meet Jerry Garcia of the Grateful Dead and find out what he believes. We'll see you. Got it? Jerry Garcia, the, the, the question, I guess, that the program asks uh, at the beginning and the end and most of the time during the middle is, who are you? And uh, what turns you on? Uh -huh. and I, so just to, for a change, instead of sneaking up on you, can I come right in straight and honest and say, who's Jerry Garcia and, and what turns him on? Well, I'm somebody who plays music, or tries to, and I, th I, can, I think of myself as a person who's a music student. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and what turns me on is being able to, to play and uh, being able to continue developing. I think, you know, that's, that's, pretty, that's it fairly simply. And then there's concentric circles of, mm -hmm. you know, greater and lesser turn-ons. I mean, you know. Did you mean, I, I read at one point where you said, uh, I'm, I'm a slow learner. I'm not mm -hmm. very talented, so I really have to work to learn yeah. and to grow. And I, uh, you, you put a lot of emphasis on the, on the growth, on the experimentation, on the change. You, well, you said, I don't want to me. end in the cul-de-sac of success. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, well, the re the re my, my feelings about that are that, uh, that there is uh, a convention in uh, what you could broadly describe as entertainment mm -hmm. that uh, states r essentially once you have your act down once you have it together keep on doing it that's what the people want you know they're, they're coming back to see Judy Garland for the umpty billionth time and <laughs> you know whatever you know they're, they're, they're there to see you do your little dance and and I, f I feel that that's one a serious limit on uh, anybody who you know f feels that they're an artist you know rather than a an entertainer. Not to say that being an entertainer is no good, but yeah. But I would rather think that I'm involved in something that's more open-ended than that. You know, I'd rather not be able to see the end that clearly. Right. Know? And it's probably a, a thing of level. It may even be. I don't know this, but one of the reasons that um, the Grateful Dead now are are actually playing in four different mm -hmm. groups um, that you do this, even encourage this. I mean, you're doing solo work. Yes. Uh, uh, albums with the group. Partly it's explained by the cost of the of travel and mm -hmm. just putting the show together and putting it on. Right. But there are other, other less obvious reasons that I think that uh, have a lot to do with our attitude toward what we're doing and our feelings about what it is and, and uh, what it should be. Mm -hmm. And uh, we felt that having reached that, the end of a certain level of the, that cul-de-sac that, that we were talking about, mm. that uh, in terms of for us, or for a, a rock and roll group, for a performing musical group, uh, the end of that really is the colossal, the, what we call the mega gig, you know, <laughs> the huge stadium, you know, <laughs> yeah. the, uh, that we, we played in those, and uh, that's where we ended up in terms of the largeness of our audience, the greatness of demand for uh, what we were doing, and so forth and so on. We felt that that was a dead end, and that there was no place to go from there, and that at that point, the experience for us got to be one that was totally controlled in the sense of it's airplanes to motel, motel to gig, yeah. backstage, heavy security, nobody near the stage, you know, and, yeah. and, and what's worse is that it's also reflected in the way those very large venues deal with people. They deal with them in a, that sort of cattle prod methodology, you know, lots of cops, sure. lots of frisk lines, lots of tightness, you know, and uh, we felt that what we were doing and what we wanted to do was definitely not that, you know, yeah, that yeah. was clearly not it. So then it became a, qu a question of, well, what do we want to do? And since that represented the end of the line, developmentally, mm -hmm. you know, uh, of what's there in America, mm -hmm. you know, what, what exists, that's it, that's the end of the line. You can't go anywhere yeah. bigger, there's no place bigger than those huge, the Astrodome or whatever, right? <laughs> that's it. So from there, it's a question of what we would like to do is improve the quality of the experience, both on the level of what we're doing amongst ourselves and how we interact with the audience and what the audience experiences when we're there. Yeah. Yeah. In that sense, we're, we're the Don Quixotes of rock and roll, you know, we're, we're, uh, 
You know, we're doing something nobody else cares to do, mm -hmm. which is trying to figure out how to make the experience what which we value and which our audience values something that's more in line with what it what it feels like which is a positive sort of outpouring of mm -hmm. go, of go, uh, good energy mm -hmm. and uh, that's 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 the reason we stopped was to think about it and to not have to continually be meat you know just you know. crank it up and yeah we didn't want well, to do that the neatest thing that you you said about the uh, the big amphitheater thing. I, I was reminded of this. It's so expensive to travel that you said mm -hmm. we ought to do one of two things: either develop a space, a, a huge uh, Astrodome or whatever, mm -hmm. that would be our home base that mm -hmm. the Grateful Dead would play in, and then other groups could use the part of the year. Right. And I was going to suggest the Candlestick Park might be available for <laughs> well, you. Know. That, that's too big. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> and, <laughs> and secondly, I like your other idea that they declare you a national resource. Right. The government could fund. That would be very group. sensible. You know. Would you go, <laughs> go back? I want to know more about you, but first, while we're talking about the Grateful Dead, in the beginning, it wasn't always, uh, at least my recollection now, it's hard for me to go, I'm going back to the 67, 68, mm -hmm. when you guys were playing with um, Jefferson Airplane and Quicksilver Messenger Service and these groups, I, there's one story, at least, about uh, a drug experience. Uh -huh. Now, I know that you were a, a friend of Ken Kesey's yeah. and that you talked about taking acid and even playing on acid. Yes. There's a story about a Kool-Aid thing where acid uh, was uh -huh. dumped in the... Is that a truth? Well, yeah. You guys I, were playing and I, yeah. kids freaked out. It's, and true. Out. it's definitely true. It happened more than once, but it was, you, it was the sort of thing where rather than... Uh, we didn't that wasn't what we did you know yeah. what we did was always pretty much the same which was to play music and that's been our main concern no matter how weird it got you know mm -hmm. but because of the times and because of what was going on there was all the, the inevitable dealer you know who would come and feel that you know in, in an altruistic gesture would say well here's this jar of apple juice you know and I have uh, a convenient 300 hits of mescaline here and I'll just pop it in treat everybody well yeah, right. You know, something along those lines. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, I mean, if you didn't know what was going on and you drank a glass, and this happened to me countless times, you know what I mean? It's not like something that happened to innocent victims in, in the audience. It happened yeah. to everybody, you know. I mean, I, was, I number myself amongst those, those uh, victims. Victims, you know? yes. And uh, it would be that sort of thing. You know, you, you, there was no way to gauge really what there was because the whole thing is, uh, was, you know, enveloped in secrecy. Yeah. How much, yeah. Jerry, was, were drugs? Is it blown up? How much? There certainly was a counterculture. You all were very much a part of it. You yourself mm -hmm. are even spoken of as the guru, the, the, the leader, the spokesperson for that um, rock counterculture. And how, how big a part of that whole movement was drugs? I, I think it has kind of a happy ending. It certainly does for you all. Well, th th I think the drugs were important in so far as that they were a way for people to find out that there was more going on than what they had previously considered to be reality. There was another level of reality, or maybe many, lots of levels. Mm -hmm. I think that that experience in my life, that experience has proved to be more valuable than most of the other things that, that have happened to me in my life. Remember that I'm a person who leads a, a sort of limited existence. I'm a, I play. And a lot of my time is devoted to practicing, and and I'm focused and, and it's fairly singular. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? That's what mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. I don't really do much else. You know. Mm -hmm. So in terms of what's available to me is experience, not too much. And uh, being able to, uh, back in the days when LSD was legal, you know, and it wasn't uh, wasn't a crime to take it or it wasn't a crime to change yourself. You know. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it was an incredible opening up. I mean, it, it, it made me realize that there was a lot more than uh, what I even suspected. And I suspected a lot, you know. Isn't that amazing? With all of the travel, with the reading, and you're into right. art, you're into yeah. filmmaking now. That's you, true. You've got over 40 um, albums, uh, you know, or been involved in them. You're uh, into engineering. Mm -hmm. You all have the, the most uh, famous, in any case, sound system in the world. Right. All of these interests and this what most people would think of as a variety of experience you think of yourself as, as somewhat insulated or isolated or right because well basically i'm I f i'm functional you know i i do the things that <laughs> i'm supposed to do you know and and i'm i'm interested in doing them and and always intended to do them you know so i don't i don't feel bad about it but i but i realize that it's somewhat limited you know are there other ways when you talk about the high now i know that 
uh, you're more concerned about health and yeah. you've talked about consistency, things that drugs right. won't do, that oh, yeah, militate right. against. So you're yeah. not into the drug thing now. How do you find, get these highs? It, is the spiritual a part of this, well, spiritual consciousness? Yeah, yeah, it is, of course. I, th I mean, that's part of the whole consciousness. I, I mean, really, my, I, I, I'd like to make one, one point clear about drugs. First of all, I don't feel uh, a, way, a, a certain specific fixed way about drugs. I think that the worst thing about drugs is that they're illegal, you know, and I think that that's the real thing that creates problems on all those levels, mm -hmm. and uh, that's just my own observation. And uh, it, it doesn't mean that make all drugs legal or anything like that. I'm not saying that, but that's what I think. That leads to I most think that that's what's really wrong about it, you know, mm -hmm. more than anything else. No worse than drinking coffee, say. You know. What's mm -hmm. a drug? You know, mm -hmm. what's a drug? We have drug stores. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you know, <laughs> all that. Yeah. Um, I think the thing of getting high is really what we were all sort of into at the time. The 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 what that means is something that, that I can't really I can't really say what it means. Mm -hmm. I can't I can't put a na a name to it other than getting high. And the people who know what I'm talking about know what I'm talking about. I'm assuming <laughs> anybody who doesn't know what I'm talking about either they haven't gotten high. I gotta go. You know. Oh, pardon. We'll me. be right back. Okay. With you all and Jerry Garcia and the Grateful Dead, and we'll get high. Oh, yes. great. <laughs> <laughs> We're just uh, sitting here in, in the old studio at uh, KPIX, exchanging altar boy stories from the good old days, and uh, finding out that even Jerry Garcia, the leader <laughs> of the dead, has a few altar boys. How does this older boy? How does a nice uh, Roman Catholic boy like you, Jerry? <laughs> I should be more serious. <laughs> we we ended the segment talking about turning people on and as, and uh, from a spiritual vantage point or within a, a spiritual mm -hmm. consciousness raising context. Yeah. And that kind of ties in with the fact that you were born and raised a, a Catholic, or maybe it doesn't. I, I think that has something to do with your with the beauty and your music and your art, the drama of, I of think your it probably religious does heritage. Have something to do with it. Yeah, it probably has something to do with the thing of. Uh, uh, wanting intensely, wanting not to blow it. You know, I don't want to be guilty. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still feel that? Uh, oh, a certain uh, amount, but no, not really. So I was sort of a laissez-faire uh, Catholic. You know, my my parents were were loose Catholics rather than devout Catholics, uh -huh. and uh, so it was the kind of thing where uh, they would send me to church. You know. Oh. That doesn't last. No, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't, it didn't you know, it didn't take really, and I did. I wasn't exposed to to uh, the real heavy stuff, uh, Catholic, church, uh, Catholic school and so forth. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. My brother got that, but I missed it. Mm. Jerry, your, your parents, your dad left when you were very young. Uh -huh. Your mom raised you and worked, and I heard her death in, what, 69, uh -huh. 70, had a real impact on you. This, you it, she was very important for you. Well, yeah, yeah, it was... Uh, it was very. It was just strange, you know. I mean, it's it's like once they're gone, that's it, you know. That it's that flash which I was aware of, really. But I was never really very close to my mother, so I felt that, well, you know, that there's something that I wasn't able to complete. You know, there's something that I didn't really do. I didn't really. I didn't. I never. I never was able to say to her that I, th I thought you did okay. You know, I was never able to finish that idea. But I don't feel that really our relationship. I don't feel as though it's gone forever. I feel as though uh, more like that was underlying throughout. You know what I mean? That she always respected what I did and, and uh, liked the fact that I was a musician and liked what I was doing and so forth. And she never uh, judged me, even uh, through things like involvement with drugs and stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. she was always pretty good. And so I don't feel really too badly about it. But mm -hmm. it's a shock, you know, like those things, sure. like things like that always are. And uh, but on another level, of course, it. It's it's interesting how uh, once your parents are gone, you know, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like the foundation, they're gone. Like you know, that's that's what it. What do you plug into? Yeah, it's very it's it's strange. On on some levels, it's liberating. On other levels, it's very uh, sad. You know. Yeah, Jerry. One thing I, I have to make this comment it may mm -hmm. sound like a departure from where we are, but um, I think people would expect Jerry Garcia of the Grateful Dead, who does not appear on on television. Mm -hmm. They would expect, on meeting you th this close, uh, a much more sort of, I don't know, far out, flamboyant, uh, you know, heavy dude type swinger. Uh, I, I don't know. I think we have stereotypes of musicians and stereotypes of, of the certainly the 
Grateful Dead Jefferson Airplane. There's a whole mystique about the dead and about mm -hmm. Jerry Garcia. And you're very, um, you're very real, very believable, very uh, normal, dare I say. Am I blowing your whole image? No, no, I don't <laughs> think so. Are you conscious of that, a kind of disparity between who you really are and what people expect of you? Well, you sure, because it works both ways, too. I mean, on some, on some levels, the media relation uh, to the reality is, it's always wrong, I, th I believe. You know, I, I believe it never is very accurate because of just everything. You know, language itself is one heavy bias, you know. So it's, but uh, you, you, I've, I've been, uh, what, j uh, described both ways, you know, more radically than I am, more conservatively than I am. Mm -hmm. So there's a discrepancy on either level, you know what I mean? I don't really feel that, I don't, I don't relate to that for one thing. I sort of taught myself that early not to, uh, not to believe that that's who I am, you know, <laughs> I mean, I don't, that's not me. Yeah. And so I don't relate to it. And luckily, uh, my, my, the kind of fame that I'm involved in, whatever, such as it is, is low enough of a profile so that I'm not constantly being reminded of it. You know, I don't people don't run up for autographs right. and no, so forth. Yeah. No, it's much cooler than that. The, and, and, and yet people talk about, and maybe there's a difference between you uh, when you're on stage performing, communicating mm -hmm. musically, and you sitting here as you said, using words. Right. Uh, there, because people talk about the saint-like quality. Oh. Uh, the, the, <laughs> and, well, I'm, I don't mean it in a, in a, in a negative way, but there, um, there is an aura about you, whether you're aware of it or whether people put it there. Mm -hmm. And it's like the thing you were, you were saying before, I thought very meaningfully. I, I said to you how my churches are empty. I need this crazy tube to reach young people. Right. You don't. You can go to Winterland and fill the place up mm -hmm. with tens of thousands of, of young people. And you said, yeah, and I, I feel responsible. Yeah. I am concerned about that. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's that kind of a leadership, not an ego mania, but a, a concern. Hey, here I am because of my talent, because of timing, because well, of any whatever, number of, yeah, right. here yeah, I am. Right. And what am I, you, you know, I, I know that you put words down and say, well, words are often lies because you can never communicate the whole feeling, the mm -hmm. whole meaning, and uh, music does it better. You, you, you've said that many times yeah. because it's more, it's freer, it's more open, and it allows for people to come in at different levels, with right. different backgrounds. And right. So, we're, but you are communicating something. You. Well, you're, I try to make an effort to certainly. You know. What is? Can you describe that or talk about that? Oh well. It's difficult since the things uh, that concern me tend to be not uh, verbal in nature. You know, they they tend to be experiential. The 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 f the fact is that most of my life is uh, has to do with certain kinds of experience that have been repeated. You know, like many times the the high energy experience of playing uh, for a large body of people and uh, for the purpose of reaching some some level. You know, and so that that energy and that uh, that thing is something that I know about, but can't really. I can't say what it is. So what I talk about, if I can talk about things, I try to. I try to make it so that what the content of what I'm saying is, you know, reflects something that I know on that level. Mm -hmm. it, I can't say it, so I have to not say it. You mm -hmm. know, I have to talk around it or something. You know, your, your music does that too, doesn't it? Right. And I sort of throw out little snatches, little right. phrase thought things. There isn't a whole neat package yet. No. It's just there is it. Bother you, bother you, bother you. <laughs> right. Oh, wait a minute. Right. You mean I have to think? I, I have to... Yeah, yeah. I, th I think. I personally feel that that uh, people like that. I mean, I know I do, you know, and it's just... it's yeah. On some levels, it's all very simple, and on, o on other levels, it's difficult to talk about. Yeah. You're very conscious of... I, I think the Grateful Dead probably have done more... W w certainly, they're one of the most generous major groups in the country. They've done more free concerts and mm -hmm. spontaneous gigs and fundraising things and yeah. stuff. But um, w you're very much aware of this continuous sort of feed and be fed, the interaction between you and the audience, which right. you say can't be captured, obviously, in a record or even in a film. You're doing a film now, right. Right. Uh, what, on the last five right. shows exactly. at the Winterland. And right. uh, to see, I mean, maybe some experience can be communicated in film, as it right. can in television. That's, and what we, well, yeah, that's why we tried it. You know, yeah. Can it happen? You know, 
maybe it can and maybe it can't, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it might work, you know. It's not working too well on TV, the uh, midnight specials and so forth. No, Even I'm, with all their cameras, you can't. Well, I think it reduces it too much. You know, that particular kind of experience, I think it just reduces yeah. it, makes it too small, you know. Huh. That's, uh, that's one level of it. But the hard thing is that you don't get uh, any kind of feedback then. Because the, you're not into fame and money. And no, but I'm into a more direct kind of feedback. I like to be in a situation where I can really talk to the people who uh, like our music, you know. And we have a pretty good two-way flow that they write to us pretty freely. And uh, by and large, they're pretty articulate. They, they, know, what, they know what we're doing. Yeah. And we recognize them by the way they speak to us, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So we know that what they're talking about is what we're talking about. Yeah. And so that, that we know, we're, we're aware of that reciprocal thing. That's you know. amazing. I, I know you send out, you have a mailing list of 35,000 right. or something, and you send out a, a preview, what are they called, sampler, right. you know, right. audition copies of the right. albums before they, right. or the records. I think and they send stuff to us, too. Yeah. You know, they talk to us and tell us about what it's That's like. That's a big so part forth. of you, that collaborative effort, because I know in the beginning your, your music was eclectic. Mm -hmm. You started with the jug band, kind of bluegrass sound, beat right. banjo, guitar, and then got into the whole thing, blues and jazz, and uh, which is a great thing. And you kind of explored all those ramifications, and now you're into a whole new form for creating. Right. Where there, you do listen to all at all different levels. Right. Well, it, it's uh, because it's more interesting uh, from the standpoint of uh, a person who's involved in lots of lots of different kinds of energy. That that that's what that is what's interesting to me. And on an, on a certain level, that's that is what I do. Also, I deal with lots of different kinds of energy and I, I feel that I'm uh, essentially someone who who works into things you know rather than I'm not an artist in the solo or in the uh, the independent artist in the Garrett mold you know mm -hmm. I'm not that sort of person Follow me, okay. right yeah. I, I'm you know part of uh, dynamic situations and, and that's where I like it and that's where I feel I function best and and the Grateful Dead is a collection of people are all people who've come to that idea you yeah know, all through various different ways and and it works you know that's that's really all we have to say about what we do you know if, if you want to see it work if you want to see a situation work that doesn't have any leader that doesn't have any plan or doesn't and, and is utterly formless really from moment to moment then and uh, you know you don't have to guess about whether something like that will work yeah. we have it and it's working you know? yeah and how, the, you know, how can you do that without bumping egos well we bump egos but uh, I think, but everybody has learned that the best things happen when everybody agrees and feels that that's the right thing to do, rather than one person has an idea and everybody else feels a little funny about it. So we go on that level of if somebody doesn't like it, we don't do it. Mm -hmm. And we've learned to trust each other after a long, long enough time of fiddling around with this idea. <laughs> we've learned to trust each other to the point of, of saying, well, if, you know, if uh, Kreutzmann doesn't like it, it's no good. Yeah, yeah. And that, that idea comes from the idea of basically that no idea really makes it if you can't include everybody in it. If you can't bring everybody. You know what this is sounding like? Marriage. Or a good marriage or a good family. Well, it's, I think it's just a good way to, to, for people to work Keep together. It. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. And of course it depends on what they're doing. I think you'd probably run into trouble if you were trying to build a bridge, you know. <laughs> you know, you can't improvise on that level too well. But I believe that if you had people that were all really <laughs> skilled at that particular world, that they could do it. Because on another level, I mean, on the mathematics level, architecturally, that's musically, that's what the Grateful Dead does, is we're creating architectures, you know. Mm -hmm. Architectural models, if you will, of uh, kinds of music. Mm -hmm. And they work, and each person adds their own personality to the whole thing, and it works, you know, somehow. Yeah. And I, th I think that everything could be that way, really. Jerry, when you talk about energy, to talk about... What's the source of your own? Do you, uh, you know, I think energy, we had the old-fashioned word we used to use a lot was mm -hmm. faith or the spirit, uh, grace, life, enthusiasm, whatever. But mm -hmm. what, what is the source? Where do, you, where do you go to prime the pump? Well, enthusiasm you that you were uh -huh. almost said, but then <laughs> enthu enthusiasm. Yeah. I think, I mean, the thing of uh, feeling good about it is like really, as far as I'm concerned, that's the gold in the situation. That's the payoff, if there is one, on the level of why am I involved? I'm involved because I like it and because it feels good. And, and the enthusiasm of feeling good about something, you know, I think that that's, that's the most important thing about, about it is, you know, yeah. on a personal level, like what do I get out of it? Mm -hmm. That's what I get out of it. And I don't think that I could do anything for any other reason. You know, I couldn't, nothing else would be 
that. You know, mm -hmm. nothing else would be that kind of a payoff. I don't, I don't. Uh, Riches, fame, power, the, just it. Well, it shows. It shows in you. You've also thought described music as your yoga, as your meditation. Right, and and by that I just I just mean that uh, I think that it's a good thing to have some one thing that you can work on on a more or less a daily basis and be able to see improvement in your own terms that uh, is a result only of your own energy being mm -hmm. put into the thing you know what i mean it's the kind of thing anything that you decided to do if you did it every day and it was something that you could notice yourself improving even if it was whatever it was yeah. you know cats cradles you know <laughs> you know <laughs> crossword puzzles I don't know, right the rosary, these whatever are all forms. sure yeah. they're all forms and they're all and i think that the things that keep opening in front of you that say, the more you do them the better you get at them you know that idea I think is really a nice idea to have in your life it yeah. keeps you centered to something you know yeah you don't have to be, be worried about how you're being judged in some absolute sense but you can judge your own progress on a day-to-day -day basis and you and when you're doing something like that you know when you're off and you know when you're on you're on <laughs> we're off thank you Jerry Garcia <laughs> okay. for, for the discipline and the sharing and the growing thank you all we'll see you next week believe God bless us all please